catch them all. Yo, what's happening everyone? Welcome to what is gonna be the first of many of our what is video here on this channel. And for the first one here, we're gonna be taking a look at what if Southampton haven't sold their best players in the last 10 years and going back to assemble this squad it's made me realize what a team Southampton would have had if they haven't been selling some of their best players. They're the, they're the English version of Borussia Dortmund, a fantastic business team that sells their players, make profits, but for some reason it hasn't really worked out for them in the last few seasons in the Premier League. They have been flirting around that relegation places. Last season it took you know, a heavy defeat to Leicester City, 9-0 for them to start picking up points. And at the end of the season, they still finished 7 points behind the Europa League places. But yeah, they had a fantastic season last season and they've started very well this one as well. But yeah, starting with the goalkeeping position, we've got Ghazani getting goal. But to be honest with you, we could have gone with any of those goalkeepers on the bench there. McCarthy, we've got Foster, we've got Gunn. But Ghazani Gere being in terms of age and overall and potential, he's, he's, he's the best option there, if I'm being honest with you. In the right back position, the only right back I could include there really is Kyle Walker Peters. We've got the likes of um, Valerie on the bench. I couldn't find, what's his name now, Nathaniel Klein. I think that's because he's a free agent at the moment. He doesn't have a club after being released by Liverpool. But yeah, take a look at those two centre-backs though, Virgil van Dijk and Toby Alderweireld. I mean, you, there's no better than, than those two in the Premier League in the last in the last sort of 10 years, to be honest with you. But yeah, there's, there's no other better players I could have gone with instead of them two. We have got on the bench though, the likes of Benerak, Vestergaard, Salasu. We've got Callum Chambers as well. Not, not many people realise Callum Chambers is a product of Southampton as so many players are in the Premier League. In the left back position, we have got Luke Shaw. But to be honest with you, I could have gone with any of those two, Luke Shaw or Bertrand. There's not much difference between those two fullbacks. I know. So just tell me what you think about it. Is Luke Shaw that much better than Bertrand? Personally, I prefer Bertrand in that left back position just because it gives you more going forward than Luke Shaw gives to you. But anyway, I'll go with Luke Shaw there because he's got the better overall and probably the better potential. We've got Wanyama in the CDM position. We could have gone with Morgan Schneider in there, but I'm sticking with I'm sticking with Wanyama. Injuries really let him down, really. Injuries have let him down. He was once upon a time the best CDM in the Premier League, or one of the best CDMs at least. In the more box-to-box -box midfield role. Um, we've, I'm sticking with James Ward-Prowse. I could have gone with the likes of um, Oxley chamberlain I could have also gone with the likes of Adam, L Adam Lallana. But I'm sticking with James Ward-Prowse because at the moment his overall is better and possibly got the better potential out of those three. Dusan Tadic, he is, he's, he's a centre forward, isn't he? By traits really or out wide. But I'm playing him in the number 10 position for this one because there's not too many number 10s in the team I'm going to stick with Dusan Tajit in that centre attacking mid position up front we've got the likes of Mane, Danny Ings and Gareth Bale I mean who else could have come into the team for those three especially out wide with Mane and Gareth Bale it doesn't get better than those two in, in that position but yeah up front we've got Danny Ings the man who's been scoring goals for fun he was so close to winning the golden boots as well last season which is a little bit unfortunate for him it's one of those players that i've seen to have got over his injury crisis and he's playing a lot of games at the moment and he's showing what a fantastic striker he is in the premier league i don't he should he should for me he should be up there with one of the best strikers in the premier league at the moment but because he plays for southampton i don't think he really gets the recognition that he deserves but anyway the bench is good We've got the likes of Schneiderlin, Chim um, we've got Schneiderlin, Oxley Chamberlain. Those two names sound similar, don't they? The Walcott, we've got um, Rodriguez, Redmond, we've got Bednarak, and we've got Adam Lalana. There's so many players that could have, so many players in the reserves at the moment that could have made the bench quite easily. 
but I'm gonna leave them on the reserves for now. The aim with this is to sing two seasons and see after the first season if we can get into Champions League places or maybe win the Premier League, you never know. I don't think the team has got what it takes to win the Premier League. Some positions to do with improvements like the goalkeeping position, right back position and even the CDM position like I said. And when Wanyama, once upon a time, one of the best players, one of the best CDMs in the Premier League, but not anymore, as you can see there, with his overall of 7 to 6. Yeah, the aim is to see him the first season and see if we can win the league or get into Champions League places. And in the second season, if we can win a European trophy, the Champions League, the Europa League, whichever one we get into, it would be nice to win one of them with these teams. But yeah, I'll see you after the first season to see where we've finished in the Premier League. We have finally approached the end of the first season here and it's taken a good few minutes to get that sorted out. We finished third in the Premier League, three points behind Liverpool and just five points behind Manchester City who won the league. I mean, that, that is a fantastic, fantastic achievement for that group of players. Let me know, would that team be finishing third in the Premier League in their first season together? But anyway, Spurs finished fourth, Manchester United finished fifth. Let's see how we got on in the FA Cup. I don't think they've played the FA Cup finals yet. It's going to be between Manchester City and um, Brighton and Hovarbion. Where did we finish in this competition? We, did we get to the round of five? No, we didn't. Did we get to the fourth round? Did we get to the fourth? round of this competition no we didn't get to the fourth round did we get to the third round this is surprising we didn't even get to the fourth round of the fa cup where is um southampton where we got to the third round we got knocked out by leicester city i mean the first leg ended as a draw one all we got knocked out in the reply of that competition um, Leicester City winning the game 1-0 away from home. So how did we how did we do in the Carabao Cup then? How did we do in the Carabao Cup? Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. We didn't get to the semi-finals. We didn't get to the quarter-finals either. And we got to the did we get to the fourth round? No, we didn't. We must have we we've done really bad in the cup competitions. Maybe the players and the players have just focused on the league and didn't do too well in the cup competitions we got to the third round again in the Carabao cup getting knocked and we got knocked out by chelsea 3-1 away from home it's still a very good season finishing third in the premier league now it's time for us to go on to the second season and see how we get on in the premier league again and most importantly now in the champions league but let's take a look at the top goal scorers for a second if we had any players in there we had Mane in the ninth position there with 17 goals. We had Danny Ng scoring 13 goals. And what about assists? It's just Dusan Tadic with six or six there. It's it's not it's not the best of seasons for our forward player other than Mane probably scoring 17 Premier League goals. Hopefully the next season is better, and I will see you after the second season. It's been a consistent two seasons for us with these players at Southampton. I think if you give these players back to the Southampton fans and tell them they're going to finish in the top four for two seasons in a row, they're definitely going to take it. We actually got more points at the end of the second season than we did in the first season. We finished it with 82 points. Last season, we only managed to get 78. So that is four more points. You could also say the teams above us you know, performed better at the end of the second season because Manchester City, again, winning the league with 91 points last season. They only got 85 points. Liverpool finishing second again. Manchester United this time in, in third. Arsenal in fifth. We've got Spurs in sixth as well. Now, how did we get on in the FA Cup? It would be nice to win a trophy. We did win the FA Cup as well. Beating Chelsea 3-0 in the finals. We beat Liverpool 3-2 in the semi-finals and we beat Arsenal 4-2 in the quarter-finals, the sixth round there. That is a fantastic achievement. Ending up, ended up winning a trophy, which is very decent. In the Carabao Cup then, how did we get on? Manchester City have won the Carabao Cup 
what round did we end up getting to in the Carabao Cup? We got to the third round in the Carabao Cup again for the second season in a row, getting knocked out by Wolves 5-4 on penalties. You never know, if we, if we had went past that round, we could have actually maybe got to the semi-finals or the finals. But yeah, still, still fantastic for us. Now, how did we do in the Champions League? Okay, it is Juventus against Real Madrid, Champions League finals. Let's take a look at the group stage. We finished third in our group. Bayern Munich topping the group with 15 points. And Sporting Lisbon in second with 10 points. And yeah, we finished third. And I think that's going to take us to the Europa League. Let's see, how did we get on in the Europa League? Oh, that's the UEFA Super Cup. The Europa League I meant to look at. Here is the Europa League then. How did we get on in the Europa League? Ah, we are in the finals against Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League. That's amazing. We got knocked out from the Champions League in the group stage and we've made it to the finals of the Europa League. We had to beat AC Milan on aggregate. Well, we, 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 we actually went to the finals on away goals. It was 3 all on aggregate and the away goal done it for us. Looks like AC Milan won the first leg 1-0 and then we won the second leg 3-2. And that takes us on, on away goals to the finals. And the quarterfinals, we beat Chelsea 3-2 on aggregate and 2-1 and in the second leg. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and play the finals of the Europa League and see if we can pick ourselves two trophies at the end of this experiment. The FA Cup and the Europa League in the second season. And in, in the same two seasons as well, don't forget we've got to the final, I mean, the Champions League positions from the Premier League, which is fantastic. But anyway, I'll see you straight after the, after the Europa League finals, of which I'm going to be showing you the highlights, actually. It'd be nice to end the two seasons experiments with a trophy here. I think this is the West Ham Stadium the London Stadium that this final is getting played at because I can see the West Ham crest on the, on the floor there but we've gone with the 4-4-2 formation it's something that I don't often use too much in the game but to be able to you know, get our better players into the team I have to play this formation really it's a very strong team for us there when you've got Mane and Bale in your team magical nights like this could go in your favour but yeah, this is the Leverkusen side we're facing up against. So you so they have got Amiri, Arangi, like they've got Fakir playing as a right back. It's a very Lars attacking Bender team, isn't it? Liam Bailey and Guerrino. The and they've got Patrick and the striker Sheik is the very front. Gifted. I mean, he's a Patrick very good Sheik. player, isn't he, Patrick Sheik? It's not going to be an easy game for us, but I'm hoping we're going to be getting our second trophy of this two-season experiment here in the Europa League Finals. Luke Shaw there on the left hand side to Van Dyke. It's the first time I'm having to use Van Dyke in any sort of gameplay on this game, but hopefully he can score a power header today. And it's the first time also I'm playing on ultimate difficulty. Let's see how difficult it is to play on it. But that's a good pass from Bale to Mane. Mane with the cross in the box. Dusan Tadic. It's starting off very well for us here. Dusan Tadic with the easiest of header. How good is Stadich? Was he was he just underrated or at Southampton or did people not just just not appreciate him in the Premier League? Because he seemed to be doing beats for Ajax in that league and in the Champions League as well. Great goal. Liam Bailey now to Angelino. He's still alone from Manchester City, Angelino on that left hand side, isn't he? I don't know if Leipzig have made the move permanent. Patrick Cheek with the goal there. But it's going to be ruled out because he was offside. Must have been close, but the decision have gone our way. Toby Alderweireld is going to go short here to look sure. Now to Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. If only he can stay fit for Liverpool. He's, he's a great player whenever he's playing for us. Over the top here to Mane. Mane is going to get there first. Mane, can he find someone in the box? Going to have to be forced to go out wide to Chamberlain. Chamberlain to Danny Ings. And the two strikers have got on the score sheet here for us. 2-0. It's going very easy. If this game continues like this, it's going to be a long, long, long night for Bayer Leverkusen in this Europa League finals. But yeah, straightforward. 
This has been so easy nicely. considering we're playing an ultimate here. Angelino. Now to Patrick Sheik. Oh, maybe I've spoken too soon talking about how easy it is on ultimate. But it's a great finish from Patrick Sheik. Well, we gave him so much time there. Look at this. I gave him. I just got the center back out when I didn't have to. They've dominated the ball, haven't they? 57% possession for them. And only the one shot on targets. Mane now on that left hand side. Gonna have to use his pace here. Mane's pace strong. It's found Danny Ings. Danny Ings is gonna turn. Bottom right hand corner. And it's 3 1 for us. I'm so surprised how comfortable it's been here. We, we haven't had too much of the ball, but any time. Anytime we get the ball on the left hand side to Mane or on the right hand side to Gareth Bale, they just both cause um, the Leverkusen defence a lot of trouble. Alex Oxley Chamberlain, now Gareth Bale on that left hand side. Look at the amount of space he's had, but Liam Bailey, though, if there's any one player on the pitch that have got the pace to get back there, it is Liam Bailey. Oh, Kyle Walker Peters. With, with a dream of a cross into the head of Alex, Ox Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and it's just powered that one home for our fourth goal of the game it's been a lot comfortable here than I expected what a cross that is though if only Luxure can do something like that from the left hand side good finish from Oxlade-Chamberlain triple substitution there for us bringing on the likes of Vanyama also bringing on the likes of Nathan Redmond in place of Danny Ings as well. The headed attempt has been blocked. It's another corner for Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, Lamina was the other player we brought onto the pitch in place of James Ward Prowse. I don't think I don't think Wanyama had no, knew too much about that. The ball have just smacked off his face and gone out for a throw in for Bayer Leverkusen. Amiri now to Liam Bailey. Leon Bailey to Sheik, Sheik to Bender, Bender back to Sheik, don't let him shoot, he's got, he's got a good shot on his left and right foot there, but he's given the ball away here, Mario Lamina has won his straight back, has got the pace to drive forward, talk about box to box midfielders, he's one of the best ones, I'm surprised he's not getting too much games for Southampton, Dusan Tadic with the second goal, with his second goal of the game on our and our fifth goal here. What a performance in this Europa League final on Ultimate as well. Like I said, it's so easy. Normally, I play on Legendary. It's the first time I'm having to play on Ultimate difficulty. And it's proved to be so much easy, easier than I expected. Not long now till the end of the game. It's just about how many goals can we score from now. But Bender has found his way past Luke Shaw. He's found Arangiz. Arangiz to Sheik. Sheik with a shot. Just too close to going, to sneaking in on that near post. But it was off target. And that's going to be his last opportunity of the game to be able to do something for his team. That's not good from Toby Alderweireld giving the ball away in a dangerous position. Van Dijk there though to win it back for us. And that's it for the end of the game. 5-1 victory in the Europa League finals. And we have won our second trophy of the of the two seasons experiments here with Southampton what a performance though especially that first half I mean the, the first half was a lot closer the second half they committed too many players forward and when you do that against us when you do that against us we're just gonna pick you apart Van Dijk there is gonna lift the trophy and look how happy the players are the fans as well are loving this what a team this is by the way and that goes to show you how good Southampton would be as a team if they haven't been selling their best players. Alright then, that is going to be it for what if Southampton had kept their best players for the last 10 years. As you can see, two times Champions League qualification in the last two seasons, finishing third in the first season and fourth in the second season, winning the FA Cup and the Europa League in the second season. Let me know which players I, I am missing in this team. From the top of my head, I think I've pretty much got hold of the best of players that Southampton have sold in the last 10 years. The only player that I think is missing is Nathaniel Klein in that right back position. But like I said, he's not on the game just yet. I think that's because he's a free agent. Let me know if I'm missing any player. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to it. 
and let me know the next what if video you want to see on this channel i've got a few lined up in the next couple of weeks but let me know what you want to see and i'll put the link to our leicester cc fifa 21 career mode on the description in this video so check it out you're gonna enjoy it and i'll see you all in the next one thank you for watching and bye for now